Hey guys, so today I want to talk about the Chrysler 5.7 liter Hemi V8 engine, specifically the pre-Eagle version from 2003 to 2008. There were various revisions made for the 2009 model year, called the Eagle Hemi, including the introduction of variable camshaft timing. But back to the pre-Eagle Hemi, this was an extremely popular engine found in 9 different vehicles and chosen on over 45% of cars and trucks where it was an option. It was also built at a profit, making it a financial success. But we're not here today to talk about the success of the 5.7 Hemi, but rather the fatal flaw that has killed so many engines. This recently affected my Dodge Charger with the same engine, so I decided to research the issue and look into it further, and shed some light on the issue, especially if you are considering buying a used vehicle that has this Hemi. So first we will look at the specs of the engine, and then take a look at the major issue of premature dropping valve seats, including what it is, what it affects, and how to possibly prevent it. So the world first saw the 5.7 liter Hemi released on various concepts in the early 2000s, but the first instance was in the 2000 Chrysler 300C Hemi convertible concept. And three years later in 2003, the engine was released on the Dodge Ram 1500, 2500, and 3500 pickup trucks. Many models would follow, like the 2004 Dodge Durango, 2005 Chrysler 300C, Dodge Magnum RT and Jeep Grand Cherokee, 2006 Dodge Charger RT and Jeep Commander, 2007 Chrysler Aspen, and 2009 Dodge Challenger RT. So that makes nine different models, including six today in 2020. This 5.7 was made it to the Mercedes 5-speed automatic and the Chrysler 5 and 6-speed manual transmissions, and more recently the ZF 8-speed automatic. Originally, the power output was rated for 345 horsepower and 375 pound-feet of torque in the Ram trucks, and 340 to 350 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque in the LX vehicles. Of course, the power will vary depending on the vehicle, and it has increased over time. And the displacement is 345 cubic inches, so you'll hear some people refer to it as the 345 Hemi. One important feature was what Chrysler called the Multi-Displacement System, or MDS, so we'll talk more about that later, but basically that first came out on the 2006 Hemis, it deactivates half of the cylinders when the throttle is closed or at steady highway speeds, and Chrysler claimed that it boosted fuel economy by 10-20%. to 20%. So this Hemi took the world by storm and was on the Ward's 10 best engines list for 2003 to 2007 and then again in 2009. So now we will look at the issue of the premature dropping valve seats, nerfing thousands of Hemis and costing people thousands of dollars. The valve seats fall out of the head, which is called dropping a valve seat, and that alone requires fixing the heads, but it can also cause a lot more damage to the engine. So what exactly am I talking about? Well let's get into some technical aspects. We will look at various things, including what the technical issue is, what are the warning signs and symptoms, why does it happen, what kind of damage does it cost, and how to prevent the issue. So what is the technical issue? Well, in the head of the intake valve there is a ring, which is called a valve seat. The intake valve closes up against the metal ring. This is made of a different material, steel, rather than the aluminum head, which is stronger. So when the parts get hot, the aluminum head and the valve seat metal will expand at different rates, so the valve seat will fall out of the head, which is called dropping a valve seat. To explain with a bit more detail, the aluminum expands at twice the rate of steel, and this hard steel metal is pressed into the soft aluminum metal in the head, and typically there's around 0.005 inches of interference, which is not enough to actually hold them in tight. Once the aluminum heats up to a certain degree, my research showed around 350 degrees, the steel will fall out, aka the valve seat drops and falls out of the aluminum head. However, the aluminum head probably doesn't ever reach 350 degrees, that's just too hot. So this is a design flaw, because Chrysler had probably preheated the aluminum head or froze the seats, expanding and shrinking the materials, and proving that the interference amount was enough. However, the margin for error is small for a setup like this, so the Chrysler quality control probably is to blame, as well as the fact that they chose a design that is difficult and complicated to execute perfectly, due to the small amount of interference. So what are the warning signs and symptoms? Unfortunately, there really aren't many, and this issue seems to happen at random, but it does seem to only happen if the engine has been running hot, gets turned off while still hot, and then gets started again shortly after, again still hot. I haven't seen any cases where it happens with the engine running, and the affected vehicles are anywhere from 60,000 miles and up, but usually it's over 100,000. So for one example on my vehicle, I was driving on the highway for two hours, pulled off and immediately filled up my gas tank, then went to start it, and it made some awful noises, shook a little bit, and then it wouldn't start again. And this happened without the engine overheating or anything like that, and no warning whatsoever at 110,000 miles. And many people have echoed the same story as me, they get somewhere, 
turn it off the car, turn it back on, and it's done. So why does this happen? There's a whole lot of different rumors around what the exact cause is. Some say due to the engine overheating, some say from revving too high, and some say from the MDS. The most common reason that people believe it happens though is overheating. Basically when you shut off the engine when it's really hot, you can get a heat spike or heat soak, and the temperatures actually rise after shutdown, and the head temperatures are not even, and a valve seat could drop. Others do say the MDS causes it, as the drop seats sometimes occur on the cylinders that are turned off by MDS, where some cylinders are not functioning, and then the temperature levels are also uneven. So the uneven temperature levels seem to be the thing to blame here. So now let's look at what kind of damage it actually causes, and I'll post pictures of all that damage from various vehicles that I found on the screen now. But what happens is that ring is strong, but also very brittle, so it will start cracking into different sized pieces, and the chunks will get pressed into the piston below it, and cause damage to the piston, since there's only so much space between the head and the piston. So the valve seat drops, it shatters, and the pieces hit the piston and destroy the spark plugs. On the edge of the piston, there's often visible damage, and when the broken valve seat gets crunched against the piston, it can also crack a section of the piston. And then those piston pieces will float around, or they could go back up into the intake valve, or they could transfer into another cylinder and damage that, or they could try to squeeze past the exhaust valve. Another problem that can happen is if a piece gets wedged and it won't let the valve close, then the piston will come up and slam into the valve. So damage can happen a bunch of different ways. Usually when just one valve seat drops, you can still start the car, just that cylinder will not fire correctly. But since you've started it, the pistons will be slamming against everything, and the cylinder will be destroyed, and as we mentioned, parts could potentially get into another cylinder and take that one out. And the same goes for if two seats drop, you can still start the vehicle, but it will cause a lot of damage. It's kind of a little bit opposite, but if you're lucky, the valve seats of three to four cylinders will drop, and then they will just sit there as a ring hanging on the valve but nothing will happen because the car won't start in that case. So they just sit there and hang on the valve, not touching or hitting anything, and nothing breaks since the engine's not moving. And if that happens, you can just fix the heads and that's it. But if not, there's damage to the rest of the engine. So how to prevent this issue? I've created several ways to prevent it if you do own one of these 2003 to 2008 5.7 liter V8 Hemis. This list shows the things that can be done to reduce the chances or even totally eliminate the chances of this happening. As I've said, the problems seem to occur after 100,000 miles, so I'm a believer that once you're past that mark, the engine is kind of a ticking time bomb and the problem could occur at any given moment. I should also say that there's no guarantee that your original seats will ever drop, but I've seen it happen so many times that I would be pretty cautious. Anyways, to prevent this issue, there are several things to do. Number one, the first thing and best thing in my opinion, is that if you are really worried about this, fix it before it happens. So pull the heads and replace the valve seat with an upgraded design and tighter seats, and that's the way to prevent it 100%. That's the job that will likely cost 1200 US or more, but it's a hell of a lot cheaper than rebuilding or buying your entire engine after it's been damaged. So that's the surefire preventative fix. The second thing to do is turn off MDS. That's the multi-displacement system that we went over that shuts off four out of eight cylinders. And again, it looks like a lot of times the uh, drop seats do occur on the cylinders that are turned off by MDS. So it's pretty beneficial to turn the whole system off with a handheld tuner or other device. And then you know that that rules out that possibility. The third thing would be to turn off MDS before shutting down. So if you are going to use MDS, one tip is to not use it right before you shut off the car, like I did for a few hours on the highway that day. When you get off the highway, put the car in auto stick for a few minutes at least, something like 5 miles before your destination. Basically when you're in an auto stick or even at idle, the MDS mode is disabled and the cylinders will heat back up and be even in temperature by the time that you get off the road and shut off the car. Again, my seats dropped after 2 or 3 hours of MDS use and then I did an immediate shut off where the heads were probably not even in temperature, causing one of the valve seats to fall out. Tip number 4 would be to never do a hot shut off. So we've been over that this happens when you shut off the car hot and you get a heat spike and the valve seats drop, so don't do that. Always let the car idle for 30 to 60 seconds once you're stopped, right before you shut off, that actually will help the head temperatures even out. And don't drive extremely hard right before you shut off the car either. Tip number five, don't overheat. Uh, plain and simple, don't allow the engine to overheat as the Hemis do make a ton of heat and get hot. Certain measures can be taken for that, like installing a 180 degree thermostat, the stock one is 203 degrees. You can even read the temperature on your EVIC instrument cluster to ensure things are cooling down. You can pop the hood to give it some more airflow once you've turned off the car. You can even install free flow cats or delete the cats, helping to lower the exhaust seat temperatures. Some of these things are a bit neurotic, but they probably would help in the long run if you're really paranoid about the issue. 
And the final reason, if nothing else, maintenance. Keep the oil changed regularly and do your normal engine maintenance. So what does Chrysler say or do about all this? Well, nothing unfortunately. It's plain and simple a defect on the 5.7 Hemis. The valve seats just don't have sufficient interference fit to hold them in tight. Chrysler knew about this in 2006, and they posted a technical service bulletin, which stated, quote, valve seat is not properly seated in the cylinder head, end quote. But there's never any recall over it, and it wasn't a safety complaint either. The NHTSA will only address safety complaints, but not quality complaints. But unfortunately, valve and piston damage will not be considered safety, but quality, especially since this happens when the car is stopped. Remember, there was a gas tank recall for the 2006-7 Chargers and Magnums, but that was a safety issue, so there's a lifetime recall on that. Chrysler would address the issue in the 2009 and up models quietly, which got that Eagle Hemi redesigned with variable valve timing. And there are also various class action lawsuits and petitions all across the states that continue to this very day. So if you're still with me, that's the end of the video on the fatal flaw of the 5.7 liter Hemi V8. We've covered a lot, and I tried to break it down as best as I could. But what do you guys think about this flaw that I've described? And for those of you with one of these Hemis, have you experienced it and what mileage did it happen at? Or is your Hemi still going strong? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe for more Mopar content, and I'll see all of you guys in the next video.